Yes. Mrs. Park. I have an order from Messrs. Flake and Limpenny to see the house. I'm afraid I've called at an inopportune time. But uh, I missed one train and the next arrived late. Perhaps, however, you won't mind showing me over. Will you come in, sir? I'm sorry, you won't be seeing the house at its best. I shall have to show you around by lamp. There's no gas or electric light. I'm afraid you will find everything just... Anyhow, I wasn't expecting anybody. Not many people come here nowadays. And it is a big place for one pair of hands to keep clean. It's been empty for a long time, then. It's ever since... Over 20 years, I should think. This is supposed to be a very fine hall. Everyone admires the staircase. If the house doesn't find a tenant or, or a purchaser soon, I'm told they intend removing the staircase and selling it separately. Indeed. Well, shall we begin down here, perhaps? By all means. Upstairs bedroom. Excuse me. I've been a long time in the train. I'm very cold. I wonder if it would be troubling you too much to get me a cup of tea. I think I could do that. The kettle's on. I was intending having one myself. I'll give you your tea in here, sir. And I'll take mine in the kitchen. Nonsense, why should you? Besides, uh, I want to talk. Oh, uh, here's the order to you, you see. Mr. Stephen Royds, that's my name, to you. <sighs> I'll remove my greatcoat, if you don't mind. The room is warm. Do you live here all alone? Yes. Aren't you nervous? Nervous? What is there to be nervous about? I don't know. Some people can't bear loneliness. Can you tell me why the house stayed on the market all these years? Well, that's easy enough. It's nobody's house. What do you mean? Nobody's house? Well, people that can afford to keep up a great house generally want land to go with it. Well, there's no land. And people that don't want land can't afford to keep up a great house like this. The estate was sold to a, a major skirting. He has a house of his own. He's left the land and he's been trying to sell this house ever since. I've shown hundreds over, but nobody's ever thought twice about taking it. Strange. A good house. But the land, yes, I quite follow you. Whom used it to belong to? A gentleman called Harboys. Do you hear anything? No. I'll make the tea. you sometimes fancy you hear things. I said, I suppose you sometimes fancy you hear things. Hear things? 
No. Why should I? These empty old houses. I'm not one of the fanciful sort, sir. You help yourself to milk and sugar. Thank you. Who was this Harboy? Is he still alive? I couldn't say. Isn't there some story about the house? Didn't something happen here? I don't know. Forgive me, but I think you do. There are stories, but you don't have to listen. Tell me. Well, I can't, sir. If Major Skirting knew I told people, I should lose my job. He'd think I was trying to prevent them from taking the house. It wouldn't prevent me. Wasn't this Harboy supposed to have shot? Oh. Then you have heard something already, sir. A little. You had better tell me all. It will not prevent me from taking the house. Well, I don't like talking about it, sir. You see, I lived here all alone. Just so. And sometimes you hear noises. What noises? It's imagination. Or the wind. Sometimes the wind sounds like voices. Sometimes I seem to hear... It may be a loose door somewhere that bangs. You mean you hear a shot fired? I've known it sound like a shot. I don't believe you. They say the house is haunted. Well, they say that when there's a tragedy happening in the house, people always oh, what say... People say. What do you say? Is the house haunted? I don't know. I've heard things, and I tell myself they're nothing. I've got to tell myself they're nothing. You haven't seen anything? No. Thank God. I never go near the master bedroom after dark. So it was there. Tell me. It must have been about 20 years ago. The place belonged to a Mr. Gerald Harboys. He was quite young, not much more than 30, and very well liked. Some said he was a bit strange. He had strange tastes. I'm told he hated any deformity in a woman, whether natural or, or, or acquired. He had some strange idea that any physical defect had an accompanying mental and moral defect. Anyway, he fell in love with one of the Miss Greys at Hornfield. She was engaged to Mr. Peter Marsh at the time, but she broke off the engagement and married Gerald Harboys. She was a beautiful woman, and I'm told he adored her. It was later learnt that she had suffered the amputation of a toe as a child. The middle toe of the right foot. Of course, her family knew, and her doctor, but no one else. Certainly not Gerald Harboys. Whether that was why he killed her, I don't know. I suppose now no one ever will know. Well, on their wedding night, they went up to the master bedroom. They hadn't been there half an hour when raised voices were heard and then a shot. The butler burst into the room and saw poor Mrs. Harboys lying dead on the bed. Mr. Harboys was standing over her, staring wildly at the dead body with the revolver still in his hand. He told the police that his mind was a blank at the time, that he remembered nothing between going into the room and the butler bending over the body. He was examined, found to be mad, and was put away in an asylum for the rest of his life.
But all the time, he insisted that he was innocent and that Peter Marsh was the real murderer. I suppose the tar boys is dead now. They don't last long in those places. Or oh, maybe he's out if he's alive. Do you think our boys did it? Of course. How else could it have happened? There was only the two of them in the room at the time. It couldn't have happened any other way. And what about Peter Marsh? Oh, he was never really suspected. The evidence against our boys was far too impressive. I swear to you that I don't believe that our boys did it. I knew the man. I knew him well as child and boy and man. I was at school with our boys. I tell you, he was incapable of murder. All the circumstantial evidence in the world will not weigh one atom with me against my knowledge of his character. They said he had fits of madness, another lie. But mad or sane, he couldn't have done it. He loved his wife. I tell you... But I'm frightening you, I didn't mean. But think of it. Yes, our boys. Rotting in an asylum these 20 years, remembering nothing of those few dreadful moments. To this day, he doesn't know whether he is innocent or guilty. Think of it. Why have you come here? You don't want the house. You never intended... No. I came here to find out. Find out what? You say strange things happen here, in this house. I've heard stories. You told me you'd heard voices, sound of a shot. But don't you understand, woman? Whatever happened in that room that night, is known only to God. The man who lives remembers nothing. And if it were true that Muriel Harboys return, don't you understand? It's the only way of learning, the only way. I can't let you go into that room. But you must. I'm going to spend the night there. I'm going to wait for Muriel. I can't let you. But you must. Don't you understand this means life or death for a man? Madness. Nobody's in your death room after nightfall. I will. I shall be sent away if it's found out. It will not be found out. I shall recompense you if it is. Here. I came prepared to pay for the privilege. How much do you want? Five pounds? Ten? Twenty? Come here, a five, five pound note. Now take them and act like a sensible woman. Then I shall go to the master bedroom. You shall light a fire for me. Is there any furniture there? No, only the bed. And if you will permit me, I shall take a chair. I'm doing wrong. No, you are doing right. I shall get the truth tonight if I have to summon the devil himself. Now, come and help me make a fire.
There's a hole in the headboard. Yes. It, it, it's, it's a bullet hole. It, 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 it nods there after... Yes. I quite understand. Gerald Harboys, the murderer. Gerald Harboys or Stephen Royds, what does it matter? Murderer or not? Only God knows. But I shall learn tonight. I like that fire woman and then leave me. Connect me to the police, please. And hurry.
Can't you hear me? I'm sitting in the same place. Here I am. Won't you come? Hey, you're always here. But you can't rest because your husband murdered you. Did I murder you, Muriel? My mind's a blank. A blank. Oh, come on. Tell me. I want to know, to know. I want peace.
Starboys. Starboys. Good mercy. 